Welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. Today I've got 10 tips for you to have a productive and fun quilt retreat. I have been attending quilt retreats for more than a decade and they are always a fun and productive time where you can hang out with old quilting friends and meet new ones and really get a ton of work done on a project or not and just relax and that's fine too. Today's video is sponsored by Cotton Cuts. They sent me a modern maker box which is curated by that month's featured modern maker which in this case is Ellie Perez who you might know from Mojave Farms Quilting Co on TikTok. Um, it comes with three yards of contemporary fabric. It's different every single month. I also got a cute a little block instruction a so creative pencil and I'm sure my children will steal. Ooh, I RFL thread that coordinates with this lovely pink fabric, which is from Ruby Star Society. So again, different fabrics every single month. You get three yards every single month and they are curated by the designer of the month that has been spotlighted. So this is a really fun little box to get. If you are mission stashing with Stephanie, this could be a substitute for you. You're still gonna get three yards of fabric. You're gonna be able to get a block to design to go with it. And then you can get some coordinating thread as well. So lots of really fun things that you guys can have delivered each month to your home. If modern fabric isn't your thing, then you also can get a classic box, a Java box, and a chroma box. They also offer stitches and snippets if you want to add on to your subscription as well. To learn more, go to cottoncuts.com or visit their YouTube channel, Cotton Cuts Club. I'm going to give you 10 tips to have a really fun and productive retreat here. Number one, when you're on the retreat grounds, bras are optional. Do not show up with all your fancy outfits. I did this once where I showed up like in my business casual and had real bras with underwires on. It was not fun, guys. Like, like just, just relax. Like, I'm a huge fan. I haven't nursed in years, but I'm still wearing a lot of nursing bras because it's comfy. You're there to be comfortable. Just go with the bralette if you do anything. Wear your lounge pants. Pajamas all day are fine. Just shower once a day. Your, your fellow retreaters will appreciate that. But just put on your new pair of pajamas. You're good. You're, you're fine. Number two, pre-cut any projects before you go. That way when you get there, you can just start sewing. This is the best tip I ever got. I actually got it from my neighbor, Mary, who I met at Quilt Retreat and said, hey, there's a house for sale next to me when she saw me frantically searching on my Blackberry at the time to look for new homes within our price range. Um, so that was a very productive Quilt Retreat. Got a house out of it. But if you show up with everything pre-cut and ready to go, then when you get there, you just get to start sewing and you can make maximum amount of progress because I don't know about you guys, but I tend to make more mistakes when I'm doing things like cutting, when I'm talking to a lot of people, which is the point of going to quote retreat and just you know, socializing while you sew. So not only are you going to be less mistake prone, but then when you come home, you're going to feel like you accomplished a lot more rather than just cutting because that's all you managed to get done while you were there. So I did this um, for a project that I was working on the last time I went. I didn't get very far on it um, because it was like my you know, if I get to a project, but it was really nice to be able to just start sewing immediately and not have to start with cutting. I felt a lot more accomplished that way. All right, this is a big one. If you're preparing your own meals, you want something that you can either pre-cook and just reheat, throw in a crock pot at the beginning of the morning, or can be made in 15 minutes or less. Um, this is such a huge thing. Um, what I hated the most, um, I attended a retreat where we would, you know, take turns cooking meals. You're responsible for one meal. And for a while, we used to like try to outdo each other in what we made. And eventually I realized that's, that's not the way to do it. I need a crock pot. I need to throw everything in the crock pot at the end of the day, because then I can just get, get back to sewing because I'm not there to spend three, four hours cooking for the other 20 people in there, I am there to sew and be productive and have fun. And I don't want to spend all that time in the kitchen. So the last time I went, um, my friend Chantel and I did a private retreat for us and I took care of the food. And 
So I brought things that I had pre-canned for meals in a jar and that all I had to do was like assemble some enchiladas or um, I had pre-made some pizza dough. And so all I had to do was roll the pizza dough out, um, put the toppings on, throw it in the oven. That's the kind of stuff that I brought with. So that way I wasn't spending all day in the kitchen. I was spending a few minutes here and there in the kitchen and then we got to eat, clean up and get back to it. So that way you're not, you know, wasting all your sewing time on, you know, you know, you can still eat really well, but you're not spending all your time cooking like, you know, and cleaning up after it. And that's just no fun. So quick and easy meals, crock pots are your friends, anything you can pre-cook and just warm back up like a lasagna or something. That's what you want to bring with. All right, tip number four, you want to bring more projects that you think you can finish in the time that you're there, but not so many that it looks like you basically packed your entire sewing stash into your trunk. So the last time I went on a quilt retreat, I did a couple of things. I brought two quilts that were just blocks that just needed to be put together because I really wanted to assemble those and I knew I would have the space to work on it. And then I brought a third project that it would be nice if I got to. That's the one that I pre-cut. And it was a holiday project because we were doing Christmas in July. So we wanted to make sure that we got, you know, some Christmas projects done while we were there. And then I brought another hand sewing project that if I got to it, great. And if not, no big deal. I didn't overdo it. I didn't bring a million different projects. I just brought what I knew I could finish plus a little bit extra because I've seen people come and like their entire chunks are, are full, full, full. And then it just becomes kind of overwhelming because you have too many choices to make. But if you have a really defined, this is what I would like to accomplish. And if I can get to this, great. But if I don't, no big deal. Um, but what you don't want to do is run out of stuff because, you know, you didn't bring enough. And then you're like, well, now what do I do? I'm here for another day. Not that I've ever had that problem, mind you. But you just kind of have to really think, what can I realistically accomplish? and then add like two more things to that list. And I like to keep all my stuff in projects in a scrapbooking bin. So that way it's really easy to transport. And so then I'm just bringing three or four of those and that's all I need. And I'm, I'm good to go. I don't have a whole, you know, back minivan full of stuff because you don't need all that. Also on the same end of that, you want a good variety of skill sets there. Um, you don't want things that are just all really, really hard because sometimes, especially when you're sewing like all day, you need a mental break. So you need something that's gonna be like stupid easy that you can just work on. Or maybe at the end of the day, your back is, is killing you and you just need to sit in like a regular chair and do some handwork or, or some binding. That's the kind of stuff you wanna think about when you're planning your project list. Tip number five is to go purchase a set of bed risers and put it underneath your folding tables because then it'll raise it up to countertop height for cutting. This is gonna really help you create an ergonomic workspace without having to bring specialty equipment and it will help your body be able to last more. And also it's really easy to take the table back down again if you need it to be at a sitting height for something else. But these are great, they're really inexpensive to purchase. You can use soup cans too, but this is just really easy and lightweight to pack in your retreat bin and you're good to go. Tip number six is to make yourself a must bring list prior to leaving. This is going to include your food, your sewing machine, uh, your projects, and make sure you include your, your power cords on this. You're gonna to wanna to have an extension cord. I have definitely forgotten the cord to my sewing machine before and like rotary cutters or like a specialty ruler that you might need for a project. Make sure you think of all of that, put a list in it and then just check it off as you're going so that way you don't forget something critical like the crock pot to cook your meal in. Tip number seven, no quilt retreat is complete without snacks. You need a good variety of sugary and salty and a few healthy snacks here and there are, are a good idea. But it is so fun to just sit there and gam and chat and then be able to choose from a, a few snacks here and there. And it's just, it's a good time. And it gives you like a little mental break, gives your hands a little something else to do. But I'm, I'm telling you, figure out what everyone's favorite treats are sugary and salty so you can just have something to go with what i like to do though is make sure that the tricks or the snacks that i bring 
are not ones that are going to leave residue on your hands because then you can just kind of have them right here and you can pop some in your mouth while you're sewing and you don't have to worry about whatever like you wouldn't want Doritos or Cheetos that would be bad because then you can't sew while you're eating them and that's the point to sew. Tip number eight, do not sit at the sewing machine the entire day. Get up and go for a walk, do some yoga, do some stretches, because otherwise you are just going to hit the end of the night and you are going to be in so much pain and it is, it is not going to be fun. So treat your body right, get up and move every once in a while, so that way you can kind of keep things um, limber and not so tight and sore. Tip number nine, you must sacrifice just a few hours of sewing to go visit a local quilt shop. This is, this is a must have, you've got to go, you got to see what each local area has because everybody's taste is a little bit different, even within the own city. But it's really fun to go and see things that maybe you don't have where you're at, or especially if you've forgotten something you're going to need to go. But it definitely is, is a fun way to spend an afternoon and just get away from your sewing machine for just a little bit. And tip number nine is to schedule a massage for like the day you come home. Um, this is critical. Whenever I'm sewing for a long time, like I have monthly massages scheduled um, that usually would be like the week after I would finish Dashing with Stephanie because I would spend so much time working at my sewing machine uh, to get to that point. And, you know, we don't always have good posture when we're doing that. So to have somebody work on your muscles to kind of get things back where they should be and get the tightness out is really good and critical. Sometimes you can also hire like a travel masseuse to come to the retreat, which is nice. Um, but I always feel like I get the best results if I do it after because if I get it while I'm there then I immediately go back to sewing like I'm just going to undo all the good work that they just did I like it to stay for at least a little bit um, so I like to find a good like deep tissue massage for like the day or a couple of days after I come back all right, well, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys as you plan your next retreat. I want to see what projects you have planned. And if you have any tips that I didn't mention, make sure to pop them in the comments below. Maybe we can do a part two. All right, until next time, happy quilting. Come join me for a So Travelry cruise departing May 2nd, 2024 aboard the Celebrity Apex cruise ship for a 13-day Western European transatlantic cruise. I'm so excited for this. We're going to kick it off with a quilt shop hop in Fort Lauderdale, Florida before we aboard the ship and then sail across the Atlantic Ocean doing our retreat on the way over with courses from myself. Angie Wilson from Gnome Angel, Joe Westfoot of the Crafty Nomad, Teresa Down Under. And once we get there, you have the option to tour England for three days, including a trip to Liberty of London with Sam Hunter. The cruise includes stops at Azores, Ireland, England, and Belgium before ending in Southampton, England. To find more information, head over to RGE Travels to get information on booking. I'm going to be on the May 2nd, 2024 cruise. I'm so excited. Happy quilting.